The leadership in NATO member Poland is convening its National Security Council after reports of two rockets and missiles landing on Polish territory and reportedly killing two people. It is not confirmed where the projectiles came from or who fired them, but they apparently hit a farm near Poland's border with Ukraine. Let's bring in CNN senior international correspondent Sam Kiley. He's following this breaking story from Ukraine. Also with us, CNN anchor and CNN chief national security correspondent Jim Shudo. Also CNN senior White House correspondent Phil Mattingly, who's traveling with President Biden in Asia. And we have CNN military analyst and retired Air Force Colonel Cedric Layton. Sam, I want to start with you. You're on the ground in Ukraine. What have you been able to learn about this? Well, just as we were coming to air there, I don't know if you noticed, but the lights went out here in Krivri-Ri, and that is because we are now a city that is joining 7 million other people around the Ukrainian nation who've been cut off from the electrical supply by this massive bombardment of crews and other missiles fired by Russia against Ukraine. Now, we know that uh, whilst this has been going on, two projectiles have landed inside Polish territory, causing a considerable devastation on a farm, killing two people uh, in or near that location. We understand it's about five kilometers from the Ukrainian border. So inevitably, the speculation will be, uh, and this will be what the Polish Security Council is meeting to discuss, and when they'll have their experts already on the ground assessing uh, how, or, or rather, what these missiles were and where they came from. And also, NATO's had aircraft in the air monitoring the airspace uh, over Poland, a NATO country. So that information as to where the, who fired these missiles and how did these missiles or these projectiles end up in Poland killing people. Now that is critical because if they <clears throat> were to assess, for example, that these missiles were fired deliberately against Poland, that would be an act of war that would trigger Article 5 of the NATO Convention. That would be the one for all and all for one a convention which means that the other me member states of NATO would be committed to whatever Poland would want to do uh, in recompense against whoever fired that missile. The assumption would be Russia. I think that is the doomsday, most unlikely scenario. Based on what I've seen here, many, many missile interceptions, sadly, over the many months I've been covering the war here, uh, the, the likelihood is that this is the remains of a missile that's been shot down uh, by Ukraine. It doesn't necessarily mean uh, that the Russians will get off on this as a mere accident because this is a missile that if it landed five kilometers inside Ukrainian territory was very, very close, arguably even already inside Polish territory if indeed it was uh, shot down. So this is the areas of speculation and investigation that the experts will be getting into, but just as this has all unfolded, we've already heard from Lithuania, Estonia, two Baltic nations, very, very anxious indeed about this kind of a scenario, reinforcing their commitment right off the bat, ahead of any kind of conclusion reached by the Poles, that they are fully committed to the one for all and all for one Article 5 convention within NATO. So this is a moment of extreme international tension, not one, frankly, that people who've been involved in this war feel is particularly unexpected, but one that is going to send shockwaves around the world, uh, right around the world, from, from China to Washington, as people try to figure out what happens next. Phil, let's come to you now. It is the very early morning there in Bali, uh, where the president's attending uh, the G20. Are we hearing anything yet from, from the White House? Yeah, it is 4 a.m. here. Obviously, most White House officials not awake, or at least weren't, before this all happened. And I think what this moment underscores when you talk to White House officials is kind of exactly what Sam was saying. They understand the stakes. The tension is very real. But more than anything else, they need information. We just got a tweet from the National Security Council spokeswoman kind of underscoring this point. Adrian Watson tweeting, we've seen these reports out of Poland and are working with the Polish government to gather more information. We cannot confirm reports or any of the details at this time. We will determine what happened and what the appropriate next steps would be. Now, it's worth noting, President Biden has two more events on his schedule later today before he departs Bali to head back to Washington. This is the final day of his six-day foreign trip across three different summits. And it is here in Bali at the G20 summit where Russia's war against Ukraine has really been a central focus. U.S. officials have been working furiously behind the scenes to try and get as many of the G20 members as possible to sign on to a declaration condemning Russia's 
Russia's actions. Much of the kind of side discussions here, if they aren't related specifically on the military side of things, have been working on the economic side of things, on the energy side, on the food supply side of things, all kind of aftershocks of Russia's invasion over the course of the last nine months. This has been the central focus of this G20 summit, and that will obviously be ramped up as world leaders wake up or as they're grappling with this new information right now. One thing to be sure of, according to the White House officials I've spoken to, they are very intensely focused on this. They do not have the final answers yet, but they are absolutely searching for them at this moment. They know the stakes. Even, guys, President Biden was in Poland in March of this year, just seven months ago, visiting U.S. troops that are stationed there as part of the NATO defense front lines and making very clear this, the commitment to Article 5 that no inch of NATO territory uh, should be abridged, basically. Whether or not this encompasses that, still very much an open question, guys. So, Colonel, I mean, it's hard to imagine, I think, tell me if I'm wrong, that Russia would intentionally fire a missile into Poland. They know the consequences of that. So if this were, as Sam was laying out, if, if this were the scenario that a Russian missile was lobbed, Ukraine shot it down, projectiles or shrapnel from that came down in Poland and killed two people, then what is the response from Poland? Yeah, so that uh, presents a few problems, doesn't it, Allison? And that is probably a likely scenario at this point. Uh, you, you know, what would happen, I think, is, of course, would uh, express a great regret at, at this situation if they were actually shooting down these missiles. If uh, the missiles weren't shot down and uh, they were Russian uh, missiles without any uh, interference, if you will, from a Ukrainian air defense, uh, then, of course, that's a completely different issue. Uh, so the, the Poles and the Ukrainians would work something out if it uh, you know, were the first scenario. If it's the second scenario, uh, then I think the Poles would, uh, you know, at the very least, use diplomatic efforts to go after uh, the Russians, and it could potentially uh, escalate into something where NATO uh, develops a coherent response, whether that's a military or an economic or diplomatic response. Of course, it's another issue, but I suspect what we're seeing here is we're going to stay in the lane of the diplomatic uh, and the economic, at least for now. Mm. Uh, Jim, to you, uh, many questions still to be answered. The most important, who and what? Who's responsible and exactly what happened? But does this, eight months into this war, fit Putin's M.O., that this would be an intentional uh, uh, rocket or missile fired over into NATO territory? Frankly, no. I, I, first of all, let, let's just caution here that it's very early. Even the U.S. military and, and NATO officials are, are, are making very clear they don't know exactly the circumstances here. If you look at the information we have so far, the, the, the more likely scenario is that this was accidental as opposed to intentional and possibly, as Sam referenced, a Russian missile uh, that was hit by an air defense system and then came down on Polish territory. More likely. No one is confirming that is, are the circumstances here, uh, but that is a likely scenario. I spoke to a U.S. lawmaker on the House Intelligence Committee a few minutes ago who said that that kind of circumstance, he's surprised it hasn't happened yet, in fact. Uh, in some uh, nine months of war now since the Russian invasion going back to February, given the volume, the many hundreds of missiles that Russia has fired at Ukrainian territory, including in the western part of the country, very close to the Polish border here, uh, that given the number of missiles in the air, the number getting shot at and, and shot down, that this hasn't happened yet, right? A, a, a more likely than not accidental as opposed to intentional strike, given that volume. And as a U.S. military official I've known for a number of years reminded me a short time ago, the Russians don't always have the greatest aim, right? And we've seen that with some of their strikes before intended for military facilities that, that hit non-military facilities, uh, et cetera. So we have to factor that in. I think uh, take a moment before we, we discuss scenarios where NATO is invoking Article 5 to go to war against Russia, right, to defend one of their own. We're not there yet. Uh, that said, this shows the tremendous danger of waging a war on Europe's largest country and firing an incredible amount of munitions at that country with frequency and not always the accuracy that you would like. Frankly, Russia often doesn't care what it hits right on Ukrainian territory. They deliberately target civilians and other targets. So that's something to keep in mind. But, but before we get to a space here where, where we have NATO declaring war on Russia or, or, or a coordinated military response, that the facts don't justify that at this point. Now, we do know that that U.S. officials, NATO officials are looking at this very closely to know exactly what happened. And even short of, say, invoking Article 5, given that two uh, citizens of Poland appear to have died in this attack, uh, 
you can't expect some response. And, and I think once they have the facts determined, that's what you should be look, what, what we should be looking for is the most likely outcome here. We're getting a little bit of new information mm -hmm. here, Sam, that I'll read to you. The Russia Defense Ministry has just come out with a statement. They say the statements of the Polish media and officials about the alleged fall of Russian, in quotations, missiles in the area of the settlement of that farm is a deliberate provocation in order to escalate the situation. They go on to say there were no strikes made on targets near the Ukrainian-Polish state border. Your response? Uh, well, that's not true. Uh, it's absolutely not true. We know that there were strikes, uh, attempted strikes, and I believe uh, actual strikes not very far from Lviv, the first that have been seen there for some time. Lviv is not very far from the Polish border. I think what is uh, also troubling about this statement is that it has come out very, very quickly, and it means that the Russians have climbed very long way up the tree of denial, a denial that is going to be very difficult for them to reverse. Uh, but it could well be that this is some other kind of uh, military accident. 